In this video, we will be solving this question which says Ambrose, whom you met in the last chapter, continues to thrive on nuts and berries. You saw two of his indifference curves. One indifference curve had the equation x2 is equal to 20 minus 4 square root of x1 and another indifference curve had the equation x2 is equal to 24 minus 4 square root of x1 where x1 is the consumption of nuts and x2 is the consumption of berries. Now it can be told that Ambrose has quasi-linear utility. In fact, his preferences can be represented by the utility function u of x1 comma x2 which is equal to 4 square root of x1 plus x2. Now, with this information, we are asked Ambrose originally consumed 9 units of nuts and 10 units of berries. His consumption of nuts is reduced to 4 units but he is given enough berries so that he is just as well off as he was before. After the change, how many units of berries does Ambrose consume? Now we are given that x1 is the consumption of nuts. So your x1 represents nuts and x2 is his consumption of berries. So your x2 represents the consumption of berries. And also the utility function is u of x1 is equal to 4 square root of x1 plus x2. Now let the original consumption bundle which is of 9 units of nuts and 10 units of berries. So let the original consumption of nuts be represented by x1 such that your x1 is equal to 9 and the original consumption of berries be represented by x2 which is equal to 10 according to the question. So your original consumption bundle is x1 comma x2 which is equal to 9 comma 10. 10. Now let the new consumption bundle such that the new consumption of nuts be represented by x1 dash which is equal to 4 and new consumption of berries be equal to x2 dash which we have to find. So your new consumption bundle is x1 dash comma x2 dash which is equal to 4 comma x2 dash because we don't know the value of the new consumption of berries which the question is asking us to find. Now what is the condition for this x2 dash? It is given that he is given enough berries so that he is just as well off as he was before. That means the utility that he was getting from the original consumption bundle which was x1 and x2 is equal to the utility he is getting from the new consumption bundle which is your x1 dash and x2 dash. Your x1 x2 is 9 comma 10 and x1 dash comma x2 dash is 4 comma x2 dash. We are also given that the utility function takes the form of 4 square root of x1 plus x2. For this particular case your x1 is 9 and x2 is 10. So substituting the values of x1 and x2 we get 4 square root of 9 plus 10 is equal to and for this util, uh, utility function which is the utility of 4 comma x2 dash your x1 is 4 and x2 is x2 dash so making the substitution we get that this is equal to 4 square root of 4 plus x2 dash solving this we get 4 multiplied by 3 which is 12 plus 10 is equal to 4 multiplied by 2 plus x2 dash that would be 22 minus 8 is equal to x2 dash thus x2 dash is equal to 14 hence after the change Ambrose would be consuming 14 berries so the answer to this question is 14 berries let's move on to the next part which says on the graph below indicate Ambrose's original consumption bundle and sketch the indifference curve passing through this point. As you can verify Ambrose is indifferent between the consumption bundle 9,10 and the bundle 25,2. If you double the amount of each of the good in each bundle you would have the bundles 18,20 and 50,4. Are these two bundles on the same indifference curve? We are also given the hint that how do you check whether two bundles are indifferent when you know the utility function. So let's solve each subpart of the part B. We have this graph 
where on the x axis you have nuts and on the y axis you have berries and the consumption bundle 9,10 lies here if i draw the indifference curve passing through this consumption bundle then it will have the equation as u of 9,10 which is equal to 4 square root of x1 plus x2 and we calculated the value of utility at the consumption bundle 9,10 which is equal to 22 in a previous case so this would be 22 is equal to 4 square root of x1 plus x2 thus this graph would look like this red curve hence the indifference curve passing through the point 9 comma 10 is your red indifference curve also the question says that we as you can verify ambrose is indifferent between the consumption bundle 9 comma 10 and the bundle 25 comma 2 so if we graphically plot the point 25 comma 2 you will see that it will lie on the same indifference curve which you can also verify by calculating the utility at the point 25 comma 2 so let's quickly do that which would be u of 25 comma 2 is equal to 4 square root of 25 plus 2 which is equal to 4 multiplied by 5 which is 20 plus 2 which is equal to 22. Hence, since both the consumption bundle are giving Ambrose the same level of satisfaction, hence they will lie on the same indifference curve, which you can verify from the graph as well. As 25,2 lies on the red indifference curve, which was the indifference curve passing to point 9,10. Now, the question says, if you double the amount of each good in each bundle, you would have the bundles 18,20 and 50,4. Are these bundled on the same indifference curve? So for that, let's quickly calculate the utility at the consumption bundle 18, 20. That would be u of 18, 20, which is equal to 4 square root of 18 plus 20. If you don't know the value of square root of 18 and you don't have the calculator as well, I will tell you a quick trick so that you can approximately get the value of square root of 18. That would be 4 multiplied by 18 can be broken up into 9 multiplied by 2 i have taken the closest square so that i can take that square out of the square root plus 20 that would be 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by square root of 2 plus 20 that would be 12 root 2 plus 20 now root 2 is approximately equal to 1.5 here i am assuming that you might be knowing the values of root 2 and root 3 which are some basic values so that would be approximately 12 multiplied by 1.5 plus 20 which is approximately equal to 38 now note that the utility from the consumption bundle 18 comma 20 is 38 whereas the utility from the consumption bundle 9 comma 10 was 20 and since the utility from the consumption bundle 18 comma 20 is more than the utility of the consumption bundle 9 comma 10 thus they will lie on separate indifference curve as this consumption bundle or the consumption bundle 18 comma 20 is giving Ambrosia the higher level of satisfaction hence it will lie on the higher indifference curve and the same thing goes for the consumption bundle 50 comma 4 which you can verify from the graph as well so if you try and plot the points 18 comma 20 and 50 comma 4 which will which you will see will lie here and here thus they would lie on a separate indifference curve hence the answer to the final question is are these two bundles on the same indifference curve so the answer is no as the consumption bundles are giving different utilities to the ambrose hence they will lie on separate indifference curve let's move on to the next part which says what is the Ambrose's marginal rate of substitution or MRS x1 x2 when he is consuming the consumption bundle 9 comma 10 and we are asked to give the numerical answer also what is the Ambrose's marginal rate of substitution when he is consuming the bundle 9 comma 20 so let's first understand what do you mean by marginal rate of substitution by definition marginal rate of substitution or MRS measures the slope of the indifference curve at a given bundle of goods it can be interpreted as the rate at at which the consumer is just willing to substitute a small amount of good 2 for good 1. Mathematically, your MRS is equal to partial derivative of x1 with respect to the partial derivative of x2, which is further equal to minus of mu1 divided by mu2. Now, what do you mean by mu1 and mu2? Your mu1 is nothing but the marginal utility of good 1 and mu2 is marginal utility of good 2. 
so let's quickly revise these as well by definition the marginal utility of good one measures the rate of change in utility associated with a small change in the amount of good one here the change in utility is represented by del u and the change in the amount of good one is represented by del x1 thus your mu1 is equal to the partial derivative of utility function with respect to x1 and for the calculation purposes when we are partially differentiating any function we keep the other variables as constant so since here here there are only two variables x1 and x2 thus for calculating the marginal utility of good one where we would be partially differentiating the utility function with respect to x1 so we would be keeping x2 to be a constant likewise marginal utility of good two measures the rate of change in utility associated with a small amount of change in good two mathematically your mu2 is equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x2 and here you would be keeping x1 to be a constant so using these definitions let's quickly calculate the mrs we are given that your utility function is of the form u of x1 comma x2 which is equal to 4 square root of x1 plus x2 and for mrs we have to first calculate the values of marginal utilities so that would be mu1 is equal to partial differentiation of u with respect to x1 and for that we would be keeping x2 to be a constant hence your partial derivative would be 4 divided by 2 square root of x1 plus 0 which is equal to 2 square root of x1 and mu2 is partial derivative of u with respect to x2 and here we would be keeping x1 to be a constant and since this is constant the derivative of constant is 0 so that would be 0 and now we would be differentiating x2 with respect to x2 that would be 1 so this is 1 now we have to calculate the marginal rate of substitution at 9 comma 10 so let's calculate mu1 and mu2 at 9 comma 10 your mu1 at 9 comma 10 10 is would be 2 divided by square root of 9 which is equal to 2 divided by 3 all you have to do is just substitute the values of x1 and x2 with 9 and 10 since mu1 was only a function of x1 hence i only substituted x1 as 9 and mu2 at 9 comma 10 is 1 which is a constant thus your mrs at 9 comma 10 10 would be minus of mu1 at 9 comma 10 divided by mu2 evaluated at 9 comma 10 this is nothing but minus of 2 divided by 3 divided by 1 which is equal to minus 2 divided by 3 so the mrs at 9 comma 10 is minus 2 divided by 3. Now similarly let's calculate the value of marginal rate of substitution at the point 9 comma 20. mu1 at 9 comma 20 is 2 divided by square root of 9 that would be 2 divided by 3 and mu2 at 9 comma 20 is again constant. All we are doing is the substituting the values of x1 and x2 into these expressions. Let's substitute the value of mu1 at 9,20 and mu2 at 9,20 into this formula to calculate the MRS at 9,20. That would be so MRS at 9,20 would be marginal utilities evaluated at the point 9,20, which would be equal to minus of 2 divided by 3 divided by 1, which is equal to minus 2 divided by 3. So the marginal rate of substitution when he is consuming the consumption bundle 9 comma 20 is minus 2 by 3. So let's move on to the now let's move on to the next part which says let's move on to the next part which says we can write a general expression for Ambrose's marginal rate of substitution when he is consuming the commodity bundle x1 comma x2 this is mrs x1 comma x2 is equal to dash although we always write mrs x1 x2 as a function of two variables x1 and x2 we see that Ambrose's utility function has a special property that his marginal rate of substitution does not change when the variable dash changes in the previous part we saw that the definition of MRS was the marginal rate of substitution measures the slope of indifference curve at a given bundle of goods and it can be interpreted as the rate at which a consumer is just willing to substitute a small amount of good 2 for good 1 where mathematically your MRS is equal to partial derivative of good 1 represented by x1 with respect to the partial derivative of good 2 represented by x2 that is del x1 divided by del x2 or it can be written as minus of mu1 
1 divided by mu2 where mu1 is the marginal utility of good 1 and mu2 is the marginal utility of good 2. Also in the previous part we saw that for the utility function u of x1 comma x2 which was equal to 4 square root of x1 plus x2 your mu1 was 2 divided by square root of x1 and mu2 was a constant which was equal to 1. So making the substitution of mu1 and mu2 into this expression, we will get the value of MRS as minus of 2 divided by square root of x1 divided by 1, which is equal to minus 2 divided by square root of x1. Hence your MRS x1 comma x2 is equal to minus 2 divided by square root of x1. Now note that MRS is only a function of x1 that is it is independent of x2. Thus his marginal rate of substitution will not change when the variable x2 changes. When the variable x2 changes as MRS is independent of x2 that, that is x2 is not affecting the mrs at all so that was all for this question